Hey everybody, how's it going? I am using a free version of StreamYard because I didn't have the password and the email for our other one. So I just got all of that, of course, right after I did all of this. So I'll use the free one tonight and then I'm gonna go back to the one Aaron and I use, we share one. So I don't know what I'm gonna react to though. Everything's fine. Hey, everybody. Yes. What? No. What? I'm I'm good. Can you come bring me? Can you come here? Sorry, am I yelling? What? Oh, that you do need to do. Okay, it's gonna be dark for a second. It's gonna come back light. Hello. Sorry, just getting my my stuff together. No, I didn't spill anything. I just dropped something, but I would like you to clean this and give me some water. Pretty please. What? Thank you. How are y'all? Um, I am good. I'm good. I'm having a good time. Just uh, hanging out, you know. I do need to find something. I have a video that we can react to, but it's like an hour and 11 minutes, which I just feel like is so long. But let me find, I think I have something on my external hard drive. I think I have a to be filmed. There's nothing in it. Wait, yes, there is. Mm, mm, mm. Minuscule videos. There's nothing in there. I call Colleen. There's nothing in there. Okay. There's nothing in any of these, really. Okay. All right. Doot, doot. Speed it up, maybe? Okay, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. I wonder if I can speed it. Oh, I bet it's on YouTube, actually. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let me get it on youtube because that way i can speed it up sorry i'm just looking for the how long is this one is that one long it's longer than i want it to be let me see okay there we go downloads i'm pretty sure this is on youtube so i can just do that but now i've got to find it where'd it where'd it go there it is. Open. Oh no, it's Zoom. Oh, I can do it. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this video is going to be a Ray Higdon video, but he's training for an Elamir team. Um, I think someone sent this to me, so thank you for whoever sent it to me. So Michael Mansell was in one of the first Elamir videos that we watched or like the opening. Like, I think if you were there, you might remember. Um, oh boy, Ray Ray. Yeah. So it's this guy and Ray Ray. I'm just going to like get it started. And maybe some of y'all, if you remember, if you recognize the main guy named Michael, go ahead and let us know. Um, but yeah, he was in like the beginning of Elamir stuff. So this was kind of recent. When was this? I don't know. Nine. It was September 20th, so I guess that's not kind of recent. I mean, it is, but for Elamir, meh, not so much. Ah, uh, Prophet Ray. <laughs> Let the roasting begin. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, okay, so I can... Um, hi, hot 80s girl. Hello, everybody. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Natalie. Hello, Emmy. Uh, let's go ahead and see. The issue is... I don't think I can speed it up in here. <laughs> I wonder if I can like open it. Let me see what I can do. Video file. Um, hold on. Okay, so. To go full on into coaching and has been doing a phenomenal job also as an author has written several books if you guys have ray ray's not done a phenomenal job also puppy is there a puppy 
Did she pop in? Someone, one of them pop in? Wasn't the dudes of Valmir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. One of the dudes of Valmir. That's true. That's true. Okay, so I have an idea. I wonder if I can open, open with QuickTime Player. I wonder if I can share my screen with QuickTime Player. Window, Chrome, Window, Entire Screen. Uh, well, I guess I could do this and then share that entire screen. Um, actually, no, I can't. It's fine. I think we'll just bear with it. Yeah? Y'all y'all good to bear with it? Or I can go look it up. How was y'all's uh, holiday? Did, did y'all have a nice holiday? How'd it go for y'all? I probably should ask that, right? I think I would like to know. Um, okay. So Echo Echo, did you send that to me? Is it an MP4? The ILC player can go faster. <laughs> the man show. Oh, that's what it is. The man show. He was on the man show. So let's see. Oh, whoops. That one's unplugged. Um, Echo, Echo, what's your, mm, I don't want to, here, I can find it down here. Ba -ba. Thanks for your patience while I find this, because I don't want us to have to sit here and not watch it on speed, you know, fast speed. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. There we go. Is this it? That one's not it, but there, but that is, I think it's from you. Oh, I forgot. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to see, look for the videos. I mean, I should probably check StreamYard. Oh, nice. I'm glad y'all had a decent holiday. All I, all I want, well, oh, you know what? There is such thing as Google Drive, which I could look at. This is a new shirt. Oh, I found it. I found it. There we go. Hey. Oh. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to switch us. We drove a total of about 12 hours. Or 11 and a half-ish. Or 11. Something like that. Between 11 and 12 hours. So it was great. But it was not great at the same time. All right. Let's do this. So I'm going <clears> to... <throat> Could try. <coughs> Do I hate subtitles? Let's see if this is too fast. Decided to go full on into coaching and has been doing a phenomenal job. Also, as an author, has written several books. If you guys have not read any of his books, uh, he's got one on social media marketing. He's got well, one on how to be How's that? a freakishly effective leader, which I absolutely love and definitely apply okay. those tactics and strategies in my business and in my team. So, if you haven't picked up any of Ray's books, I highly recommend that. Do y'all hear any echoes on my end? Does the sound does it sound good? Just let me know. And we'll go from there. So. Um, but Ray was nice enough to come on here tonight um, to share some wisdom with you guys in terms here. of we've just, you know, got our Elamir uh, business off the ground here. We're about 60 days in. Those of you that have been, you know, in it before launch on July 5th, you guys have been working even longer. But we have launched really strong out of the gate. And now it is time to move into sustainable growth. It's like, we were all excited. We're all hyped up from everybody coming Thank in. You. And, you know, we've even seen a couple of people that have left already because they just couldn't stick it out from a startup standpoint. And that's okay. And, you know, Van's pretty transparent about that too. She's, she... He's already like, we, people have left because they couldn't stick it out, right? From the, from the startup, they just couldn't do it. Ray talks slower than him. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, that's actually not why a lot of them have gone to uh, Awakened. So they went to one that's even more in a startup, right, than Elamir. And people probably left Elamir because they were promised a lot of things that weren't true, like the amount of money and the product. I was like, come on, Michael, we're not dumb. Come on, bro. Just, I could probably didn't think that people in the anti-MLM world would see this, but we do. And we know what you're doing. You only want people that want to be with us, not because we're enticing them to be with us. And that is something that I love actually seeing because as we stick it out, as we grow our Elamir businesses moving forward here, we're going to be rewarded for that. And there's no better person to help us understand how to grow our businesses than Ray. Ray, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited to be on here. I see some familiar faces. What's up, Ron? There's no better person than someone who hasn't grown an MLM business for years <laughs> than to help us grow our MLM business. Love that, friend. And his failing business. His failing business is really what's going to help us grow. Love that for him. Wow. Ron and Amanda and Angie and see uh, several several familiar faces. It's good to be uh, good to be on here, man. Appreciate awesome. it. Yeah, you've been you've been around the block a few times in terms of being in the industry. You've seen a lot over the years, haven't you? In terms of just how the industry has grown, how it's expanded, how it's you know uh, morphed with the digital age of social media and everything. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, when I when I first, I would say, got serious about network marketing, because I had, I had been. Um, I, you can be in both at the same time, but some people just left completely. Uh, they just left Elamir completely. And uh, yeah. So uh, I heard the Ray Ray too. I heard the Ray Ray too. Ah, sped up videos are a gift. Yes, yes, they are. In network marketing and had struggled and, you know, bumbled and failed. And but when I got serious about network marketing, you know, Everyone was everyone was telling me that social media wouldn't duplicate. I remember I was at uh, the you know one of the early. So first of all, you guys are a new company. Uh, I I became the number one income earner of a company I joined in pre-launch, and so I understand all that it's like you, you know, when the company's new. And let me tell you, everyone wants to be in. Uh, at let me tell you that that is not impressive. You're in pre-launch of a company, and you became number one in pre-launch. It, it let it go for ten years. Come back and try to be number one. Love to love to know if that's possible to be number one. Mm, it's not actually because they have their set legs up top. At the top, everyone wants to be in when a company's new until they're in new. <laughs> yep, and then true. they're like, hey, uh, well, how come uh, the shipment isn't going out or how come the software is messed up? And, and obviously, you know, I, you, know, uh, you know, you know, some of the people behind it, Terry and, you know, some of the different people behind it and you have some amazing, amazing people. Um, but uh, yeah, when you're in new, you know, you just got to understand that there's, there's going to be some bumps in the road and you either have vision or you don't. And, and so, um, you know, there's other options for, for people without, you know, vision, but you, you do have to have. <laughs> They're upset because Elamir has busted in a lot of ways and said a lot of promises and lied about stuff. And Ray's like, well, it's your fault. You didn't have vision. It's your fault. You're upset. You didn't have any vision. Your, your lack of vision is why you're upset. No, maybe because the company promised we'd have enough product and we didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is literally so funny. Because it's a pump and up. That's right. Katya said, and even when it's not allowed to be in multiple MLMs, people still do it, according to the young living lady. Y'all. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> a vision for you to uh, stick through because there's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some surprises. Um, you know, I, uh, I mean, I remember I, I, I was just telling the story, but I, uh, I had a guy, a business owner up in, I think he lived in Port Charlotte, I think. And he was fired up. He was, he was you know, ready to go. And, and uh, he came on board and he's like, well, you know, man, I'm gonna crush this thing. And then the next day he was like, Hey, where's, where do I order the business cards? And I said, Oh, you know, we don't, you know, we don't have a lot of stuff right now, but you know, we'll get that stuff in. And he goes, how am I supposed to build without business cards? I'm out of here. Yep. Like, really? Like, like, like that's how easily you folded. Um, and I'm like, all right, okay. And went on to make millions of dollars with that company. And, and we had a blast. It was, it was a great, great company. Um, decided, my wife and I decided in 2016 to no longer actively build a team and uh, focus on the industry. We like to make a difference at the industry level. And so that's what we've been doing for, you know, for quite a while now. Um, had the pleasure, you know, we've worked with a lot of rock stars, um, you know, teams of 100,000, uh, 750,000. We've worked with some you know, large leaders <laughs> and great companies and we've had a lot of fun. Um, so I want to hopefully True. maybe dis demystify some of, you know, how to build and, and give some suggestions and happy to take questions you know as well um and so i don't want to assume that everyone knows my story so i'll, I'll very quickly just you know just share that um so i had worked my way up in, a, in the corporate world to a pretty good paying salary pretty high paying salary for someone that never finished high school on time didn't finish college and um 
but I wasn't happy. And you, you know, and I looked at my time. boss and his boss and her boss, and none of them were happy either. You definitely finished high school. It doesn't doesn't matter that you didn't finish on time. Like that's fine. But you definitely finished high school. The way he said that, it was like, bro, what? And they were making more money than me, certainly. Um, but they were having problems at home. They it was very clear that like that was just going to be my future if I stayed there. And and I didn't I didn't want to do that. And so, uh, long story short, I I left the corporate world, which and I started my own business and not network marketing, but in real estate. And you know, hey, it didn't work out. <laughs> and uh, and I didn't want to go crawling back to a job. Uh, and someone, uh, my good friend Chris out of Cape Coral, Florida, invited me to a meeting. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to figure this thing out. And so there were a few things that I did yeah. um, every day and became the number one income in that company when it was pre- His wife is in an MLM, not, yeah, not a luxury realtor, re- realtor. Yeah, no, she's in an, a retail, a realtor MLM, sorry, y'all. A realtor MLM or, you know, that kind of thing. Launch um, when we had you know, one product, when we weren't in anywhere but you know in the U.S. and most states there were no one. Uh, I wasn't the master distributor. I wasn't anything special. I was at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of an inside leg, inside leg, inside leg. Um, and uh, I even had you know I had you know leaders that, that promised me some stuff that you know, didn't, didn't do it, and, and I built anyway. And I decided I'm going to make this thing happen. In pre-launch, bro, there was not that many people in pre-launch, my guy. Happen. I'm not going to complain about what I don't have or what isn't ready or, or what's lacking. And I just, uh, I just went to work yep. and, you know, there were three things that I did, but I want to, I want to break those down in a little bit different you know, fashion so that you really understand it. The three things that I did to become the number one income earner of that company, which uh, I would argue today would still make you, you know, maybe not the number one earner, but it would make you a top earner in any company. I had read a book called go for no. Hey, Julie. And that book, it just kind of made sense to me. Y'all, uh, Julie Anderson was in rank makers and she has talked about it on her YouTube. I think it is important to listen to her and her, um, you know, experience in it. So make sure you go watch her videos. And she also is on Twitch and Instagram. You should go follow her. And that yeah, it sounds like a terrible title, doesn't it? Like go for no, like I get plenty of those. Hey, um, how many yeses, man? And, and so, but it made sense to me because it does two things. It reduces your resistance to rejection and it reduces your reaction to rejection. And too many people are struggling with one or both of those. They're either too worried about getting rejected, so they never ask, or they get a no, and then they're, they're eating ice cream, you know, the rest of the day. And, and so I read that book. I'm like, yeah, this makes sense. And so I set a no goal. And I, I figured, I'm like, you know, I have big goals because I, I had big debt. I was in massive, massive debt. And uh, I'm like, I got big goals. So, you know, what would make sense for me to really uh, build a large organization? So I set a goal of 20 no's a day. And, and 20 no's a day is, is unreasonable. It's, you know, it's borderline crazy. I know three people that uh, have come to me and told me they did the 20 no plan. All three became million dollar earners. Maybe it's just coincidence. Um, but, um, you know, the, the folks that wrote Go For No, they like my story so much that we actually did a book together called Go For No for Network Marketing. And, and so the whole, you know, Go For No. And let me tell you, maybe you're on here and you feel like you're super skilled, right? Like you're like, just amazing. You're super closer. You're really, really good. And you're like, I don't even know how I could get 20 no's. Well, uh, you can by reaching higher. And so the Go For No, it, it actually adjusts to your skill level. Because I, I started getting much better at closing, so I started reaching high. I mean, I brought in uh, I brought in people that were running ten, twenty million dollar businesses, and, and they became reps of mine. You know, uh, someone that was in my um, uh, that I brought into my team, who's now he's going to be speaking at our event next month, Russell Brunson. So Russell Brunson's a co-founder of, of ClickFunnels, and that company I don't, I don't know exactly, but it's over one hundred fifty million dollars a year company. And you know, and he was in my team. So like, as as I started to increase my skill, I, I started to go for bigger no's. I started asking bigger people, and sometimes. There's something about Ray that makes me take things that he says um, as partial truths and never like whole truth. Like it's a lie, right? But like partial truths, right? There's some partial truth in it. I just can't, I don't know what it is about him. I think it's all the BS that he said. I just, I can't take anything that he says completely true, right? Like I feel like there's just a lot of partial truths in what he's saying. Um, So like, sure, maybe he made it to the top of the company, but remember he was like, you know, the downline of the downline of the leg of this leg of that leg of the, and it's like, no, I, I, I don't think that he was that far down. I don't think it was that big of a deal. Um, I think that he was in the pre-launch and he made it to the top. I think that's pretty easy uh, for someone like him and for early in MLM life uh, to do when you are maybe in his position, knows people, been in corporate, done all of that. And most of marketing wasn't talked about back then like it is today. So yeah the n- not go for no gross yeah it is it is gross yeah being in a real estate MLM doesn't mean you were in real estate yeah it it's I I don't know her story I think she was um 
like in actual real estate and i don't i don't, honestly i don't know though i can't i can't tell you but i do know she's in an mlm that does that um so yeah be wary but most real estate people are you know they have their stuff and they're not <laughs> in an mlm what is it it's exp re it's exp hold on give me one second um exp realty something like that um julie said totally a lot of partial truths Judas has been saying the exact same stories for the last six years, maybe longer. Well, yikes. I get a yes. So, you know, pretty powerful. And go for no isn't go for non-responses because I got thousands of those. Um, it's actually someone telling you no. Hey, are you open to take a look at what I'm doing to make extra money? Hey, are you open to take a look at this product that I got that helps me with this? Um, no. Okay, that's one. And, and so that was the first thing. That was the first kind of part of my, of my routine. And the second part was I hated prospecting. And notice I did it anyway, but I hated prospecting. I hated reaching out to people. And I wanted to create a way for people to reach out to me. I wanted to create, you know, some kind of, you know, we really didn't use the term attraction marketing back then. It really hadn't, it wasn't popular back then, um, that term at least. And so I started um, doing a video a day. And so I figured if I do a video a day, um, eventually someone somewhere has got to see these darn things and, and I'll start generating some leads. And so my goal was to get people reaching out to me. And so in the beginning, no one's seen my videos. And oh, by the way, they're terrible. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm, I'm like outside. I'm like a weatherman. Ray Hood in here. And you can barely hear it. You're like, what, what do you say? And, uh, you know, the sun's directly behind my head. So you can't even see who is it again. Like, it's just terrible. But I was just moving forward. I'm just failing forward. Just keep doing it. And so I uh, just kept doing it, kept going, kept showing up. And at one point, I was uh, generating over 3,000 leads a month without ads. Now, prior to TikTok, that's pretty impressive. Okay. Now, since TikTok, I mean, we have. So this is a good question, Natasha. Um, real estate agents do have to take, you know, classes and major tests to become one. I don't know how that MLM works. And I think that's something I could look into um, and let y'all know. Maybe I could do a video over it or something. So Ray did. Okay, here's Julie. Ray did a video a day. According to him, Facebook Lives didn't exist at that point. Ah people on our team or, you know, not my network marketing team, but people like, you know, that work for us or people in our membership and our rank makers that, that, you know, generate that kind of stuff with TikTok and Instagram reels and Facebook reels. But back then that was, that was pretty good. That was a pretty good deal. And, and so when you're generating that kind of, you know, leads, you know, you can, you can do pretty good with, with recruiting and it's not that difficult. Uh, but, but that didn't happen right away. That took, that took me some time. That took me a while of showing up. The thing with this is he acts as though network marketing nowadays is the same as it used to be. It's not, even though it's easier in the sense that like you have social media, it's not because you also have social media and you have people like myself and many others speaking out about it and telling their stories and getting people weary of it. You have huge documentaries that come out and talk about, it. you know, it's people are noticing people can see it. Um, obviously not everyone, um, but a lot of people and it's harder now, I think, for people to be successful in MLMs when you don't, one, get in early, two, have a huge following. And that's that. I think it's very, very difficult if you don't have one of those two things to grow one, mainly because people are, are like myself in the anti-MLM arena of things in this genre, trying to get people to notice what's going on and and show the manipulation tactics. And y'all know what I mean by that, but yeah. And royalty, you don't look for clients. They come to you when you're ready to buy or sell, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. We love our realtors in here. Hands up if you're a realtor. <laughs> and, and not getting results for, you know, for a while. And then the third thing, very simple, just self-development. You know, every day I had to do something to work on myself, whether it was, you know, reading a book, whether it was reading a chapter, listening to audios, et cetera. And again, to go on to become uh, the number one owner of that company. And so uh, Brooke's asking, what were the videos about? And so I talked about, you know, if I had to do it over, it'd be a very different story, it'd be a very different story. But back then I talked about what I was learning. And so I used a process called ILT. And this is something that I've been teaching for you know 10 years. ILT stands for invest, learn, teach. And so all of you on here are I and Ellen, right? So you, you invested your time to be on here, right? I don't know if they charge for it or not. Sometimes teams do, sometimes they don't. But you invested your time, at least, to be on here. You're hopefully learning and you're, I'm going to teach you a bunch more stuff, but you're learning stuff. The question is, will you teach? And so I don't read a book that videos don't come from, right? So I don't ever read a book and then just like, all right, all done here. Like, no, I take some of the concepts that I learned from that book and I edify the book. I edify the author and I create videos. And, you know, that used to be, you know, just Facebook Lives or you know, YouTubes, you know, now. Yes, Julie. She said, here we go. He's doing it 
over right now, claiming he's been chosen by Jesus and is hinting he's a prophet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's not like a lot of people who do that aren't like straight up. He's not like Jesus has chosen me. I'm, you know, the master realtor. It's like an insinuation of him being that. And so it makes you insinuate, oh, okay, so I guess he's this, you know, um, the acronyms. Oh, I know what <laughs> I can say an acronym, CBA. I actually did not mean to do, I, I didn't want to say ABC and I don't know why I just went CBA backwards. Uh, TLP. Is that what he said? No, he didn't. I something. It's very easy. What do those mean? I have no idea. I didn't ask for this vibe. <laughs> There is absolutely nothing wrong with reading for pleasure. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's so weird to think that every single thing you read has to be completely educational, right? Has to be, that is toxic in of itself. Like anything that you have to read has to be like a personal development thing. It's like, no, that, that's, it doesn't have to. Absolutely not. Oh, it's what I'll do is if I'm going through a book, especially a good book, I'll take every major note and every major note becomes its own Instagram reel. And so it's the, it's the simplest way for you to come up with content is just take what you're learning. Now, a different way to look at this. And, and, you know, a few years ago, I created some, some mantras that, that, that drive me is uh, and mantra. Number one is help the person you used to be. So a lot of people, they struggle with what is my brand? What's my avatar? What's my target? What's my niche? Right. And, and so in the absence of something fancy, just help the person you used to be. And there's a lot. Well, let's make ILT something else. So, Julie, invest, learn, teach, good grief. I did this for years. Haha, -ha, ILT. Let's make ILT stand for I love tacos, right? I, I'm feeling that vibe. Let Anytime someone says ILT, it's I love tacos, not this BS. I think that's a better acronym insertion. What? For it. Uh, of there's a lot of shades of that with me. You know, I mean, I, I grew up in a very abusive home. I've been broke twice. Um, you know, I struggled with, with parenting. I got four kids. I struggled with parenting because I just, I didn't have a good role model and I struggled with self-worth of being present. And so I'd be with my kids for 4.2 minutes and have to be on my phone doing something. I've uh, been a workaholic. I've been, an, uh, I've been a successful but unfulfilled person. And so every single one of those types of people I can help because that's what I used to be. And, and so, you know, maybe you're on here and, you know, you wanted to, you know, you've been wanting to lose some weight and you know, you've lost 10 pounds so far, but you got more to go. Help the person wants to lose 10 pounds. Right. And so the big, the big divide is people that don't understand marketing. They think, well, I have this, I have this thing for sale. I must talk about this thing in all of my videos. And that is very limiting. And it's very, eh, it's like, okay, she's got her things for sale. All right. Instead of the thing you have for sale, think about the who you're trying to talk to. And that's where help the person you used to be is, is just so powerful because you know them. You overcame that. You survived that. Maybe you're in a bad relationship. Maybe you, you know, had trauma in your life. You know, maybe you um, were burnt out at work. You know, maybe you, um, you know, maybe you were struggling with parenting and you got better at it. Do you know how many people struggle with parenting? Like help that person. And so help the person you used to be is, is it's such a powerful driver and such a, a, a clear uh, vision because you're good at that. See, a lot of times people either they, they go into sales mode and think I must sell this thing. So I'm going to talk about, right, uh, you know, this bioflavonoid, you know, that's like how, many, how many videos you make about bioflavonoids or whatever. Right. It's like kind of gets old, kind of gets boring. Um, or they try to be a master of something they don't really know. So they think, ooh, you know what? I'm going to talk about network marketing, but they've, they've never really made it in network marketing. <laughs> or, or they, they want to talk about social media marketing, but you know, they, they haven't built a big following. Instead of that, talk, read this talk the person you used to be. Like, what I'm advice reading. would you give yourself from two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago? And you know, I remember you know, I, um, after, after high school, I got into a relationship and uh, she like totally ripped my heart out. Now I was, you know, I had it coming. The signs were all there, right? But I went from... Jada, that's good. Help the person I used to be without exploiting them. That's my goal. So sometimes people are like, this is just basic sales. You know what I mean? Like, this is just basic sales stuff. And you know what? Some of it is absolutely. But you know what that person's not doing? Trying to get that person to join an MLM, you know, trying to um, get them to build a team, make them spend a bunch of money where they think they're going to earn something back, but they won't. Basic sales and MLM or network marketing is very, very different in a lot of ways. Like the insinuation is so, so crucial to think about because it's like, well, no, this is basic sales. It's like, well, do you know Ray Ray? Do you know what he stands for? Do you know what he's done?
do you understand that he's not in basic sales? He's not in sales. He's in network marketing. That's a different business model. They're like, it's just sales. It's affiliate marketing. No, if it was, it would be called affiliate marketing. But it's not. It's network marketing. Cough, Colleen, cough, <laughs> true. Um, God, I've heard this training for so many years. I could train it better than Ray. I bet you could. I know you could. I would rather hear you train it. Julie Anderson, you are more charismatic than Ray, though. Yeah, and way cuter. <laughs> Does Ray even know these people sell yellow strips? <laughs> oh, that's cute. Hi, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. How are y'all? Non-binary pals, how are y'all? I'm going to say that. That's so cute. Player baby. I love that so much. Only get my rip, my heart ripped out to being depressed and all kinds of stuff to, you know, getting into a relationship only because I felt safe in that relationship. Not that it was the ideal relationship. How many people could I help with that? Right. And help them see, Hey, you know, you deserve like a great relationship. You can have a great relationship. And so uh, there are things that, you know, that other people haven't learned yet. And you go on a video. So one of my clients, she is a uh, multiple six figure earner in her company. Uh, she has five kids and all of them are doing really well. They're all in sports and it's like amazing. Like she's got a great business. She's got great kids. They're getting scholarships and stuff like, and she wanted to talk about network marketing, which she does know. And she is good at, but I'm like, God, I think there's a lot more people that are interested in how the hell you did both. Right. How, how were you? How were you a mom? Because it's rare to meet the successful mom that doesn't have mom. We help. love you. Right. We love all our non-binary people. We love our trans people. We love our gay people. We love all people. And uh, you are all welcome here. Unless you're very mean, <laughs> then I'm sorry, but I'll put you in time out. And if it happens again, then I'm sorry, but I'll kick you. Not physically, obviously. <laughs> none, Ray. None. <laughs> Thanks. It is something we say in Twitch community. I got it from another streamer, but I forgot who it was. Oh, I love that. Um, you know what rips my heart out is Marvel movies. <laughs> Give me a damn happy movie. I'm tired of feeling all the things. True. Obese to beast. Hello. Um, I would never take any kind of relationship advice from this guy. No. He was doing rounds and flogging the rank master's event. What? Don't be a chore. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, he also trained iGenius in another company. Oh, bleh. Oh, bleh, bleh, bleh. I'm not surprised about that one. That stops a lot of moms. And, and so like, she just, she started talking, okay, and started talking more about being mom and, and what she does to help, you know, her kids with, you know, with her making their sports, you know, meetings and activities and all this different stuff. And like, it just blew up. Like people are way more interested in that. And then when you're not talking about that thing that you sell and you're talking about something else, people start to trust you more. Then they start to connect with you more. Then you build a bigger following. Then you get in the DMs and you say, you know, Hey, uh, I don't know if you're even aware that I do this side business, but I have a side business and that's what helps you make all these meetings. And all of a sudden you're in the direct message with someone that trusts you and, 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 uh, you know, uh, wants to be more like you. And that's a really easy conversation to have. And so, and, and Michael, I don't know if you plan on this being an interview or are you okay with me? Keep going or yeah, you wanna... just keep going, keep giving okay, the right, value okay. there. Yep. Um, and so, so I would do it very differently. So I, I talked about the things I was learning, which is mainly business, social media, marketing, and that kind of stuff. Um, because back then I just wasn't, I wasn't willing to be vulnerable. I didn't even know what that meant. Talk it just sounded weird, promoting. right? Like, mm, no thanks, right? You're at a buffet and you're like, would you like some vulnerable? No, thank you, right? Like I just wasn't vulnerable. I, I wanted to be Superman. I wanted to be perfect and awesome and unstoppable and, and, you know, whatever. And what I learned is literally everything in my career changed when I started being vulnerable and I didn't even, I didn't even plan it, okay? I had a, a, a leader in my team that I had confided in and, and I told him, I'm like, yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm actually getting out of foreclosure. Right. And, and in the real estate crash, I got wiped out. I went through a divorce. I went through foreclosure. I was, you know, at one point literally living on my, my buddy's couch. Um, and it, it just wasn't, it wasn't pretty. And I confided, you know, I told, you know, you know, this leader that I'm like, yeah, man, you know, I mean, I'm bouncing back from foreclosure. And he went to go, this company, uh, he got some kind of. Okay. You can tell me if I'm wrong, but being vulnerable is not about something necessarily like he's bragging, right? Like, I'm being vulnerable. I told him how I'm not getting out of foreclosure because my MLM, right? That's that's not being vulnerable. That's, you know, what you're doing is you're, like, laying a stepping stone to getting this person to join your team. Um, vulnerability is incredible. It's important. But also, you don't have to be vulnerable. You don't have to be open with everything about yourself or anything about yourself. That's oversharing to manipulate. Ooh, that's good, Sila. That's very true. Um, it, it's it's not vulnerability. I think vulnerability is more of like 
you know, yes, I am experiencing foreclosure, you know, I'm really having a difficult time with it, you know, something that maybe you wouldn't want people to know unless you trusted them. I don't know. Um, we need, we don't need to know any of this, right? I lived on a buddy's couch. I was in the basement of my buddy's car. <laughs> this is definitely oversharing. Yes. Oversharing to manipulate. So good. Here come the sob stories. Yes, yes, yes. Wait, a couch, not a basement? I call BS. Right? Isn't that <laughs> basement? Every sob story has living in a basement involved. Ray, you up. <laughs> That's funny. The old different company, and he was going to, to leave. And he's like, hey, I'm going to tell everyone you're in foreclosure. And I'm like, oh, hmm. Hmm. Eh, I will. <laughs> and so I go live that day. And uh, or actually, I don't, I don't know if live was even around back then, but uh, I did a video that day and I said, hey, I got something to admit to y'all. And, and that is, uh, man, when the real estate market crashed, I got wiped out. I got wiped out and I, I you know, I went to foreclosure and, um, you know, this network marketing has been bouncing me back. Everything skyrocketed. When I started late. Okay, pause, because I don't really care about Ray, but I do care about Iris in a sweater. Pause, pause, pause for dog moment. Oh, no, just put it, put it go. Did you say Luna? I said Iris in a sweater. Look at Iris. She's a boy. Hey, CB, Harry. It's my Iris in her sweater, and she actually loves it. Look how cute it is. Iris, can you tell him? <laughs> She's the cutest thing I ever saw. Yeah. Oh my goodness, look how cute she is. If you can, I don't know if you can see, but her eyes are like half blue, half brown. They're gorgeous. Um, the sweater, my stepmother gave it to me. Um, yeah, I'm pausing for Iris in the sweaters, mandatory. Look how cute she is. You like your sweaters? <laughs> really? She's, she's just so stone faced. Right. You want a treat? You want dad to get you a treat? She looked right at dad. I hope y'all like this pause. Look how pretty. Hi, CB Heart. You're the cutest little girl in the world. Yeah? Okay. Okay. I need that sort of... Oh no, Luna's losing it. Luna's... Oh! Okay, Dad will get y'all treats. Riley, go deal with them. She said, like... Dad, mom said treat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so pause for the pause. That's cute. I love that. Pause for her. Hello, <laughs> her eyes are like, what the fuck? Her eyes are always like that. She's so dorky. Um, when you said treat, her eyes said, dad? <laughs> She's so cute. Okay, let's get back to it, shall we? Letting down my guard, and I stopped trying to be perfect, and I stopped trying to, you know, not let any weakness show everything took off. Everything was crazy. I started getting asked to be on stages. I started being asked to be on podcasts. I started. And so, you know, vulnerability is such a major key. And, um, you know, we don't have time to get into all, the, all this different stuff, but I'm telling you that thing that you're scared to admit so many people, other people have struggled with that and having the courage, which is what it is, yes. having the courage to be it's vulnerable okay. is, is game changing because most people assume everyone else is full of crap. And, and so when you are trying, I'm the expert, I'm perfect. They, they just don't believe you anyway. So they're not going to connect with you. They're not going to buy your stuff. They're not going to get in your direct messages or anything. But when you're willing to be vulnerable, that's when you're really helping people. You're really transforming people and you're just showing up differently. And so, you know, now I'm, I'm willing. Remember that what he said was not vulnerability. It was oversharing to manipulate. I think Silas, did you say that? Because that was wonderful. I think it was silent. Yes, that's oversharing to manipulate. Yes, his intention is not to be like, look at me. I'm so excited. Woo, be excited for me. His intention is, hey, you you want this too? You know, it's it's like the first stepping stone, like I said, to um getting him to join. <laughs> Jada said, I still think Ray's full of crap. <laughs> um Sky with O Sco, is that it? Off. Um, do you thank you for this. My family dog passed last year. Oh, I'm so sorry. My family dog just passed a few weeks ago and it's awful. And we haven't had any since, but that sh sh shaking and barking sounded almost identical. Oh, it made me very happy. Oh, I'm so glad that I could give you some happiness from that. Um, I, I agree, Victoria. Also, my tooth, my teeth are not in pain anymore, um, but I do have to go to a root canal specialist just to get a diagnosis before we can do anything further. 
and it's very expensive. So I don't know when I'm going to do it. Um, oh, so manufactured relatability. I blame Rachel Hollis. <laughs> Makes sense. Playing to show, you know, all my you know scars and all the different things that I've, you know, the barbed wire that I've climbed through and, uh, and help people out. So there should be no mystery as to what builds a network marketing business. Uh, I boiled it down to four uh, key components. And, and these, they all happen to start with the letter P. <laughs> and, and so uh, you may want to write these down. And uh, uh, they're, I'm, I'm purposely not putting them in order of uh, importance uh, for a reason, um, but we'll discuss them. And so it's pipeline, posture, position, and perspective. Okay. So pipeline, posture, position, perspective. So pipeline, what's pipeline? Pipeline is a very simple concept, but it's a concept that eludes most network marketers. And they're literally confused on why they don't have more success. And pipeline is the answer for anything performance-based, period. Anything performance-based has to do with pipeline. Anything performance career-based has to do with pipeline. Pipeline is how many people are you talking to, following up with, setting appointments with, uh, possibly depending on the company, doing demonstrations for, sending samples to, whatever. Now, it's, it's the same in anything performance-based careers. A realtor. Pipeline, car sales, pipeline, like literally, literally anything that's performance-based, pipeline. And so, you know, my wife, she's a, um, she's now, as of this year, uh, she's a, a luxury realtor here in Naples, Florida. And no, she's not. She loves real estate. Um, she's flipped a lot of properties. She's done a lot of investments and, you know, she knows her stuff. And, and so, um, you know, but even with a, a license, right, you know, she had to go through all this training and it sounded horrible and uh, she got a license. But even with that license, if she doesn't tell anyone she's a realtor, she doesn't make any money and no one's confused by that fact. No one's confused. Now in network marketing, you have all these anti MLMers, right? They're, they're, hey, they're oh. the crew. And, um, and you know, these are people that joined a network marketing company, didn't do the work and now complain about the network marketing promises that they believed or they, you know, they were told or, or whatever. And it, Ray, I'm just going to be very, I'm going to be very straight. Ray, you're an idiot straight up. Um, just a, a dumbo, like straight up idiot. Let's talk about why, because Ray knows that he's lying. He knows that he's lying. <laughs> Shouting out to us. Hey, Ray, I hope you enjoy your time up here. It makes me feel better when you say things like that. Right. It makes me feel better to do this when you say things like that. Um, <laughs> Jada, I have no negative experiences with MLMs. You're still here. Right. She's like, I'm still here. And I had never had a negative experience. It, because it's like logic, right? For some people, it's not because for me, like it, I grew up where MLMs were fine. Like I grew up in high school using MLM products with my friends selling MLM stuff in high school and Ray sitting here trying to, the goal for people like Ray is to, um, what is the word? I'm not gonna be able to find it to like, not tear us down, but like make us look like we're not like reliable or um, someone might know the word. Um, <laughs> Victoria, first of all, thank you so much. Victoria said, my Animal Crossing villagers are fighting and I blame it on Ray Ray's BS. <laughs> uh, not anti, not all anti-MLMs were in an MLM. And yeah, the thing is, some of us were actually, and by the way, there's, it's fine if you weren't, it's really like, there's no reason, like, I'm not better than anyone because I was successful in an MLM. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't mean any better than anyone. But what he's he's missing is that some of us were actually pretty successful in MLMs. So, he, but he's going to shove that down the drain. Uh, belittle, yeah, kind of, but more when it comes to, like, uh, making us look like we don't know what we're talking about. Does that help someone come up with a word? I forgot the word. Uh, kind of, I think someone's going to say it, but. It, I just think it's so interesting that he has to do that. Like, if you have to do that, you're telling me everything that I need to know, right? Like, if you have to act like the truth that we're showing, right? The FTC, what the FTC says, what your company's income disclosure statement says. If you have to, yeah, like discount us, kind of um, make us seem like we don't know what we're talking about. If you have to do that, then that seems like a you problem. If you have to discount us to, to make yourself feel better, um, then that's something that's deep inside of you that you need to deal with. But he wants to make us look like, you know, we don't know our stuff or that we are just bitter, angry people lying about what we, you know, what we did or what we do or, you know, just trying to get back at the man. It's like, no, um, I actually had the option, right? I told you, this is kind of what it's like. 
for those that um, are hitting success, right? You, you have, you're walking, right? Discredit. There it is. Something like that. Credible. Oh yeah. Like, like it make it seem like we're not credible. That's, that's even, yes. Disparge, cast light. Yeah. Well, all those things too. Um, but like, you know, you're walking, right? And by walking, I mean, you're working your MLM. You come to crossroads, you go, okay, here's the thing. You can either go up this crossroads road that says you will make it to the top. Most likely you're going to make a lot of money on your way, but you're going to hurt a lot of people, manipulate a lot of people, or you can lose your income and have to figure life out and have to retrain your brain from what you learned being in a cult. But you do the morally correct thing by not continuing what you're doing, which is going to continue to manipulate and hurt people because now you know what's going on, right? You come to that crossroads and that's what a lot of us did. We came to the crossroads once we realized, right, what was going on and we left. And um, obviously it wasn't easy. I had to find a new job. I had to do a bunch of, I, it was hard. It was very, very difficult. It was, it was one of those things you fight with yourself with. You're like, oh, like I just, you know, I'm, lost my income. Um, my mental health's awful, but like I did the right thing, I think. But what do I do for money? It, it's, it's very difficult. Um, but yeah, no, he tries to make us seem like we're not credible. Katie Hope discredit sounds right. Yeah. Actually, those who were, who are the ones that should speak up even more, they're the ones that were on the inside. Yeah. You know, like people like, I mean, I think I see what you're saying. Obviously, everyone should, I think everyone should speak up, right? If you, you know, it, even if you weren't an MLM and you just think these things are bad, like, obviously, that's great. Some, some of us who saw the inside of it, you know what I mean, can share more about the inside of it. Um, yeah, anyway, that crossroad is deaf when that wool has been removed from their eyes and they have to make a decision. Yes, absolutely. Um, he is priming people for what will happen, which is anti MLM rhetoric being thrown at them because it will. Yes, yes, yes. I wasn't successful in my MLM, but I really didn't have a negative experience. Yeah, some people don't. Like, some people don't have a negative experience. And that's totally valid. Like, not everyone has the worst experience ever with an MLM, but the amount of people that do and the extreme that, you know, the extreme uh, manipulation and pain that it causes are so much and so great. And the lies that, you know, the deception that happens, the amount of deception that happens are so much and so great that people need to know. Um, so I think that's a good point. Not everyone's going to have that um, struggle. Also, thank you, Raw Olives. <laughs> I love that. Natasha, welcome to the membership. Yay. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Julie Anderson's videos are excellent about him. She leaves no crumbs. Yes. Yes. This is Julie Anderson, by the way. She's in the comments. Go sub to her. She is incredible. So is Echo Echo. Um, and if you are also a creator, feel free to comment below if you want people to go sub. It just shouldn't be a mystery. And so when people come to me and say, Ray, you don't understand, man, I'm in a tough place. And, you know, I want to be a top earner. I'm right where you were, man. I want to make it happen. I know with one question, if they're on the path, how many people last week did you ask for open to your product or business? one question that's all i need and and so if it's if it's zero or single digits then hey they may go on to make some money but they're just not gonna be a top earner that's just not the deal that's not how it works and and so and there, and there should be no qualms about it right like that shouldn't be like how dare you sir uh no it's just you can ask a hundred people and still not be even close to a top earner so when they say you do this work that's how you're gonna get there but that's not true. That That's actually a lie. They have this like weird thing where they insinuate reassurance of you'll make it, but you got to put in the work. Oh, look, you didn't make it because you didn't put in the work, even though they put in the work and they did everything they were supposed to do. It's awful. It's a great way to guilt people. Math. I mean, you know, I find like I had some super recruiters on my team. I had some people that were really good. I was, I'm, I'm, I was good at recruiting for sure. And I had some really good recruiters and the best recruiters I've ever met close about 30%. And so if they talk to 10 people, they'll probably get three people on, right? Unless they're using some, you know, like a funnel or something like that, that, that is more qualifying on the front end. But if you still, if they speak to 10 people, maybe they get three, maybe four. And, and so uh, that's if you're a super recruiter. 
if you're not a super recruiter, you're getting five to 10% probably. And so if you work those numbers, you know, backward, I'm talking about recruiting now product a little different. You can have, you know, you can have a product and if you leave with the product, you can, you can close more, more than that. But at the end of the day, it's how many people you talking to following up with set appointments with, et cetera. If you close hundred percent of the business you reached out to, uh, how would that look for some, it's still be zero because <laughs> they're not reaching out to anybody. And so if you're not reaching out to anybody, you're making what you should be making. So phrase right. And super recruiters close about 30%. Then I would be a super recruiter and Ray would really not like that. He said that. Cause I definitely would close about 30%. 20 to 30 for sure. Like three out of 10, I could at least get someone to buy something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He would be pissed if he knew that. The only way to fail an MLM is to quit. Don't you love that quote? Because if you, you lose logic, if you, <laughs> if you lose logic, if you use logic, you simply just have to go, well, do I fail if I quit my job? No, you don't. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. It, it's the same thing for MLM. MLM is just, it should just be a job. It should just be that. But the problem is it's not. It's way more. And so for him to say the only way to fail an MLM is to quit, it's just to make you feel guilty. And it's a way of using the um, sunk cost fallacy, right? Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm Even though I've lost a ton of money, I'm going to keep going because I've not failed. I've not failed. Um. We definitely lost logic. <laughs> um, the, the, the chat is video so cringe. Yes, it is very cringe. And if you reach out to all these people and aren't closing, it's because your mindset, of course, right? What did you say wrong? Did you do something wrong? What was said? I want to see your exact words. I'm not going to lie. So, like, I want to see your exact words. Like, I my uplines would ask me that kind of stuff if it didn't work. Not in like a rude way, but now that I look back at it, I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. These people have even messed up the word rise for me. Oh, he's being such a Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. Do you fail if you quit taking drugs? Right, right, Felicity, there you go. You didn't see results? You didn't work hard enough? You didn't work hard enough. You didn't, you did everything and more? Well, you didn't do it right. You quit because it's not sustainable. You failed because you left. There it is, Natasha. There it is. That's exactly, exactly how they go about this. We call that doubling down. Yup, there it is. Wow, y'all are on fire. Keep it coming. And you know, I know that may sting, but this isn't this isn't mystical. It's not you know your affirmations are what dictates you know how much money you make. No, they can help, right? And we'll talk about that. But at the end of the day, unless you're so powerful, which I'm, I'm not there yet, unless you're so powerful that you can manifest without opening your mouth, then you're gonna have to open your mouth and you're gonna have to talk to people. And so that's pipeline. Now, under these, the next two actually fall under pipeline. And that's posture and position. These dictate your percentage of close. This is this is this is this will help you with what percentage of the people you talk to are you actually getting to, you know, to move forward, right? And so what's posture? You've probably heard that term. Most, most people have. Um, I'd heard the term too, but no one had ever given me like a, a definition of it. Like no one ever hit me with something that's like, oh, that makes sense. And so for me, the, the definition that, that, that I created is uh, posture is the belief in what you have, regardless of external acceptance or approval. The belief in what you have, regardless of external acceptance or approval. Now, Every person on here has posture around something. Most don't have posture around network marketing. <laughs> so if someone's naysaying you, if a family member's picking on you, you're like, uh, you get defensive. I, <laughs> Julie, I feel like I felt you say this. Like, I feel like I heard you say it <laughs> when I read it. Uh -huh, not posture. No, I can't. I just feel like I heard it, you know? We, yeah. What is he saying? What he is saying makes no logical sense. No, it doesn't. Powerful enough to manifest without opening your mouth? WTH? What the heck? I know, right? <laughs> whoa, whoa, powerful. Oh, y'all. Also, I'll probably cut this in half. I'll probably do this stream tonight and go about halfway and then do the other stream tomorrow. Um, let's keep going. So when you're angry and you don't really know what to say, um, but you're posture around other things. So if, you know, I have two little kids, right? So my daughter's almost seven. Uh, she's my, she's my firecracker and, uh, and I have a three-year-old boy. And so let's say that, you know, if you have kids on here, let's say you're at the, the park and you're at, you know, you take the kids to the park, you're having a good time. And someone says, Hey, is that, Hey, is that your, is that your kid over there? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's my kid. And they say, man, they're ugly. Are you going to convince them? Are you going to try to turn them around? Are you going to try to say, no, 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 they're really cute. And they're just, they're just having a bad hair day. No, no, no. They're actually super sweet. And you know, if I can, oh, he's got this little bow tie at home. He's so, so cute. No, you're gonna say, get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Why? Because you're postured around that. You don't care about their opinion, right? Po yes. Because calling a child ugly to their parent and saying your MLM is factually not a good idea to do are the same thing. 
They're not. It's called um, false equivalency. It is a logical fallacy that he seems to do quite well. Ugh. Asha is the belief in what you have, regardless of external acceptance or approval. So you don't care if they accept, approve, or agree with the, the look of your kid. Get the heck out of here. You're not studying. How do I overcome that objection, Ray? What what exactly do I say to turn Someone them around says, so they do see my kid as this cute? Is gold. You will never ask that because you have posture. But people ask that about network marketing all the time. And so if someone said to me, uh, oh, those things never work. I said, hey, it's not fit for everyone. Do you know anyone that does want to make some extra money? And I literally, my heart doesn't alter its speed. Like if you had a heart monitor on it, you would see zero reaction because I just don't care what they think about the industry. I'm not trying to convince them. I'm not trying to turn them around. What's funny is that, like, literally, I think it's the opposite um, because he has such a temper problem. How do we know this? Uh, if you watch any of the lives that we did um, over his, and I'm going to say it, and you're going to go, what? But yes, it's true. His reality TV show. I know, right? Crazy. Uh-huh. Wild. Everything's uh, weird up in here now. Yeah, it was his reality TV show. He lost his temper quite a few times and it was disgusting strap on a monitor right prove it yeah and uh yes the reality tv show i just i think it's funny to hear him do say this because it's like hmm, that's actually the opposite i think you're one of those people that would have a shoot like your heart rate shoot right up the objection is to you scamming people maybe don't overcome that okay <laughs> right don't overcome that um uh, posture to behave in a way that is intended to impress or mislead i feel like i miss so much it's okay so i'm only gonna do half tonight because it's so long um and the other half tomorrow night so we only have a couple more minutes um thank you for your oh i'm gonna limit for right now i don't i don't blame you appreciate you i appreciate you too please go subscribe to julie anderson she's an incredible person and creator i mean she just does some great things i think that she's definitely worth this subscribe um so i'm gonna go ahead and keep playing but we are almost at a close um just because it's gonna be so long it's already been an hour i'm not trying to you know do a dog and pony show or do the well in the corporate you have you know the, the ceo and you have the janitor right i'm not doing any of that nonsense i'm not dancing for him i am not dancing for him I mean, and and just showing up that way people are kind of bewildered by it right and so it, it, it's fun like having posture when speaking to prospects equals fun and so I'll give you a couple examples. Um, so I had this lady on my team, Ashley. She was out of Alabama. And, uh, you know, I didn't do, I'm not a fan of requiring three-way calls for, you know, every talk or anything like that. But sometimes, you know, hey, I'd get on there and, and fine. And so we get on with this guy and, uh, you know, and she does a good job. She edifies me. So she did that part right. And, uh, and this guy says, I've tried a bunch of these things and they never work. That's his opening line to me. And so what would, what would most people do? They'd say, well, this one's different. We're brand new, right? They do a little song and dance. I like get a little cane and a hat, right? And they would do this, this goofy dance that would not work because it would keep the prospect in power and you out of power, okay? So what would the posture person do? Right? Uh, power trip for Ray. I get that. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? So here's, here's what I did. He said, I tried a bunch of these things and none of them ever worked. And I said, well, what makes this any different? You tell me. What makes this time any different? And he wasn't ready for that. He's like... Well, I'm really coachable. <laughs> See, posture in prospecting equals fun. It's it's fun. It's not a drag. It's not it's not a stress ball. And so he said, uh, "Oh, you know, I'm coachable, and you know, I really need to make some money." I'm like, "Oh, okay, great." And so we can continue. And so we continue. And then he tried it. He tried it later on. Later on, the same call. He tried it again. He tried to take the power. And he said, uh, "Well, tell me about the comp plan." And I said, "Did you know the comp plan of those other companies?" And he said, "Yes." So he asked a valid question, and you tried look at his face look at his face and you tried to act like it was a power trip uh no he acted he asked a valid question but you wouldn't tell him because you don't want to yeah that makes sense you don't want him to know great pause thank you all pause story anybody um i'll rewatch and get to binge while making things for dog owners yay small business owner doing the crazy weekend of sales <gasps> yay um if y'all are small business owners and you would like me to shout you out and send a little, like, a, I think I'm going to post about some stuff on Instagram and, like, YouTube. I, I mean, I don't want anything. I just want to support small business owners. So if you want that, um, you can email me about your small business. Send me some pictures and stuff, and I can just talk about them quickly in a video. Not for um, anything. Just for free. Because uh, I would rather people support real small businesses than MLMs. Yes. Anyway, pause story.
Uh, just uh, wondering. He challenged his authority. That's why. Yo, Sila, this you tonight? Fire, my friend. He challenged his authority. That's why. Something about Ray is he hates not being in control. And we saw that with his reality TV show. He hates not having the um, controller in a video game. He cannot stand when someone wants to take the controller and play for a little bit. He's like, nope, me, 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 that's me. I'm the leader. I'm the controller. I control the situation. Hates it. It, it just pisses him off. So I think this is so good. He challenged the, his authority. That's why, yes. Pause story. When you really want to start yelling, but remember that you're on someone else's podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I would love to do that, but my imposter syndrome is like none of my stuff is good. Oh, please send it to me. I want to look. I also will be shopping for my family as well. Um, if you, I, listen, if you feel an imposter syndrome, just know people are either going to look at it, love it and go buy it or look at it, say, okay, and not buy it. Right. It, there's no imposter syndrome here. You know, you send a picture of the product, you show the products, you're fine. I would love to share it. Thanks girl. I'll send you an email later. Awesome. I'll happily send something for your, oh, you're so sweet. Or you, because I also make sure, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I would love to uh, see your stuff. Make sure to put your link in there. Cause I want to see it. Uh, pause, <laughs> pause story. Uh, someone told you facts and you're brainwashed. <laughs> that is so funny. So I did. And I said, well, I guess it didn't matter. What do you mean? You it's fun. Sure. It's be stressful. Stop stressing. Understand this. There's more of them than there are of you. And what I mean by that is there are more people with problems than a solution. So you have a solution, right? People can solve a lot of things from what you represent. They can solve money problems. They can solve health problems. I don't know what, it, you know, what other things, you know, you guys got, cooking, do, but they can solve a lot of problems by what you know. And, and, and they have problems they don't know how to solve. This guy doesn't know how to make extra money. No clue, but I could show him how I have a solution. He does not. So I also have a solution. It is not an MLF Felicity. This did not happen, right? Um, it's giving real Andrew Tate energy. It totally is. That's a good way to put it. Major Andrew Tate energy. What I find so interesting about how he's talking, where was I going with that? I got excited once I saw some people's stuff. No, no, no. MLM cannot solve health problems. Yes, there was a bunch of stuff. I'm cured. Just stop stressing. <laughs> It's <laughs> well, we're almost done with this part. Um, let's just hear a little bit of what he had to say. Hopefully, I remember what I was going to say, and then we'll pause and come back to this tomorrow. Why do we get so tangled up and they're skeptical? It's like whatever, man, whatever. Um, another example. Oh, so posture, right? Just, just, just you knowing what you have, regardless of external acceptance or approval. You don't. I, I'm not dancing for them when they pull this these little power grabs. I'm just like oh, whatever, right? And and so uh, let's go to position. So position again falls under. Okay, so we're going to stop for tonight on that. Um, this the Rank Makers guy, right? I'm just tuning in. Yes, yes, it is. And we're going to come back to part two tomorrow. So if you just got here, no worries. You can start from the beginning. I'm going to end this soon. Um, but we will do part two tomorrow. Or hope I want to do it tomorrow. So hopefully I will be able to. Um, or Sunday. But we will definitely do it before Monday. Um, I will be posting all my videos now. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Unless something weird happens to my schedule. And uh, yeah, three videos a week, definitely, hopefully at least one live, probably two. And I should appreciate y'all being here. Thank you for um, being awesome about my little break this week. I posted it on Monday, but no other time. So if you haven't watched that video, please go and do that. Um, and yeah, there will be uh, one of my favorite videos of all time that I've ever done is coming out soon, uh, maybe Monday. And I'm very, very excited. So thank you all so much for joining in. I hope you have an amazing evening and or morning or afternoon or wherever you are in the world and whatever you're watching <laughs> that's my ending i'll see y'all next time goodbye everybody